introduce me as Bob introduced me. Uh, I was in the sixth grade when St. Joseph won the state championship in 53. My brother Mark was one of the starters on the team along with Dave Newman, who we will introduce in a moment. Uh, I would just like to mention my brother Jim, who was with us at the table down here. He was in the eighth grade, so uh, he can correct me afterwards of any mistakes I might, might make. So anyway, uh, good evening again, and thank you, Paul, for your warm welcome and introduction. <clears throat> and we'd like to thank the Muskegon Area Sports Hall of Fame for granting membership to the 1953 Muskegon St. Joseph's Saints. We were named the Saints very appropriately. Paul, your timely mention of the Muskegon Parochial League really set the stage for St. Joseph's emerging to win the 1953 Class D Basketball Championship. This was the school's second state championship team in basketball. It defeated Dryden, or Dryden, wherever Dryden, is. anybody know where Dryden is? Dryden, Michigan? Uh, in 1939, it won that game by the whopping score of 16 to, 16 to 15. So, 16 to 15 and 39 went to the three number, three digit scores we had in basketball nowadays, but anyway, that was considered a big score in 1939. St. Joe's 1953 stunning, you know, really one of the stunning 58-51 overtime victory against the heavily favored Detroit All Saints team is a, is a victory worth commemorating 70 years later. And we have nearly 70 St. Joseph fans here in attendance tonight. So 70 seems to be sort of a magical number because this, it was an uphill battle for the school that did not have a gymnasium for practice or for games. They had a big fire and steel. I don't know how many people from Muskegon even remember that the Salvation Army, there's a little gymnasium above the current building, which is still standing. Uh, the Salvation Army had a little gym. There was a, a gym across the street, kind of the Catholic, uh, the CYO, they used to call it. And they had to share that gym with, uh, the three parochial teams and Christians did not have a gym at that time either, I don't think, in the early 50s. So it, it's a Hoosier story. Uh, it was an uphill battle, like I said, it had no gymnasium to practice in, uh, and the coach had been called away to work in the fall of that year with Seal Power in St. John's. So he came back to the coach the games and the occasional practice. So we had a, basically a part time coach, Chuck Weirsma who is not with us anymore, but Chuck was just a wonderful coach and he devised a strategy which maybe Dave Immonen will get into a little bit for beating this uh, much taller team. And the other thing which was kind of fun, funny to think about now is our teams, all our teams go to games in their school buses or even there's uh, some micro buses or whatever, real fancy buses, or St. Joseph's team bus was an old funeral home stretch limousine. <laughs> and they could get six or seven people in there. My dad drove the limousine and the coach was in the other front seat. And then they could get six or seven players in the back and then the other players got there with their parents. So I don't know if that put any fear into the hearts of the team that they were playing by arriving in an old stretch limousine from a funeral home. But anyway, that was their team bus. Keeping the championship dream alive while holding the St. Joseph's memorabilia that you see before you on some of these tables. Uh, during, it, during its 70th year, 70 years of existence, was the St. Joe Credit Union. The St. Joe Credit Union has been in existence. They're celebrating their 70th year of existence today. And I would just like to introduce its current director, Mary Pinesor. Mary, would you just please stand? Let's give Mary a. <laughs> for helping to keep the dream alive. And the real connection is that her dad, Frank Baker, was the assistant coach on that team. He's listed in all the pictures uh, that are around some of these tables. 
as the assistant coach. So Frank Baker, um, like you said, was the assistant coach of that team. Then he went on to head the, the St. Joe Credit Union. So Mary, we thank you for keeping the memory of the dream alive. And where would this team have been without the unsung four cheerleaders of this championship team? Here's, here's a picture of the four cheerleaders, and there's a few pictures on some of these other front tables. If anybody wants to come up and see them, if you recognize any of these names, I'm going to read uh, of the four cheerleaders. The four, cheer, four cheerleaders were Marlene Damler, Mary Jo Dedamore, Donna Cutie, and Dolores Wade. These dynamic four cheerleaders were in the era when cheerleaders actually met cheers. Their pictures are, I've got one here, there's some on these front tables if anybody wants to come up and look and if they know any of these people, uh, they're welcome to take an extra picture if you see it on the table. So not only are we honoring the team tonight, but like anything as people have alluded to in some of the previous talks, you don't achieve success in, in any of these efforts without your family and friends supporting you. So tonight, we're, yes, we're honoring the team and the cheerleaders, but we're still, we're especially maybe honoring the family and friends that stood behind them and, uh, and allowed them to achieve, achieve success. So let's never forget that, even the current young athletes that are in the house tonight, uh, this has been 70 years since the St. Joe team did it in this like the blink of an eye. And we're, we're grateful that we've been able to see this happen uh, 70 years later. So hopefully you can all come back 70 years from now and celebrate something as nice as this. And now, again, it's maybe the, my, what is my distinct honor to present one of the last living saints, Dave Eminem. <laughs> Let's hear it for Dave. Thank you. Dave, it, it won't be able to speak that long because we've got a, a cord up here on it. But anyway, he's having some voice issues, so he will say a few words. But I just want to mention, he's much, he's much too humble to mention what I'm going to mention now, is that his 1953 state record of making 14 free throws is still listed on the Michigan State High School Association list of tournament records. And that record stood uncontested for years. And Dave made 14 free throws as it was the coach's strategy to have the Dave drive the lane to get the big players to pop out, which he did, and allow the Catholic Central to win on, to go on and win um, in overtime, 58 to 51. And I would just like to mention there's one person who kind of we're very wonderful that they're, they're here. This is an Anna. Uh, Paul Cobbs uh, is here. His, his father was on the team, one of the starters on the team. And a lot of other players got credit for various things. Like Dave, for that record, he is. Uh, and my brother ended up being on the all tournament team uh, that they pick at the end of every year, one from every class. But if it wasn't for Bill Cobbs, uh, uh, Joe's dad, or John's, and Paul said, uh, uh, he made a free throw it, it, with a few seconds left that put the game into OT. If he did not make that one free throw, probably the most important shot of the game, they would, the other team would have won. So uh, Bill Cobbs' free throw really should, what has to be mentioned tonight as it is. So anyway, that was some of the drama of that game. But anyway, here is Dave Eminem, like you said, the record holder for free throws. And did you want me to tell you also about the opposite record of missing the most of these strokes? <laughs> he missed nine that game. He made 14, which was the record, but then he missed nine, which was the record too. So anyway, thank you. You're wonderful.
I want to thank the board of directors uh, of the event for this lovely evening. My only question is, what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 